Hey everyone, welcome to this week's new video at Visiting the Dutch Countryside. For those who are new, hi, welcome. My name is Minon and I'm Dutch and at Visiting the Dutch Countryside you'll be exploring the Netherlands beyond crowds basically and also learn a lot about the country. So this week's video is going to be about the St. Maat the whole day. Uh, it's one of my favorite traditions. It's not held all throughout the country, it's held in certain regions and my region is one of those. So basically very short summary is that we make these kind of let lanterns, lanterns uh, at school, at primary school, because it's a it's this main facility for the young kids. And then you'll go from door to door with your little lights in them and sing some songs, special cinematic songs, and uh, get candies. So yeah, uh, it was my favorite time. It's always held on the 11th of November and in this week's video you will learn more about this tradition and discover why it is celebrated the way it is, where it is celebrated, all the fun stuff. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe with a little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my other upcoming videos. You can also join me on my Patreon, link in my bio. Big thank you if you do that. And let's head into the video. Sint is one of the many holidays that we have in the Netherlands, which is celebrated every 11th of November and it is said that it has old Roman and Germanic roots. Saint Martin was a Roman soldier that was baptized as an adult and became a bishop, even though he didn't want to, but more about that in another part of this video. So this holiday is named after him. First things first, who was Saint Martin exactly? So Saint Martin, which is the Dutch name obviously. His real name was Martinus, who was born in nowadays Hungary in the year 316. His parents were Romans and pagans, and Martinus became one of the patriarchs of Christianity in Roman Gaul, which was a large part of Western Europe. One night, Martinus met a beggar at the city gate of the French city of Amin, who was shivering in the cold. Martinus cut half of his mantle and gave it to the poor man. At night, Martinus dreamed that the beggar was Jesus Christ, this didn't come out of nowhere, as Martinus was already interested in Christianity for quite a while. So after that dream, he left the Roman army and became a devoted Christian. And he was very loved by the poor and got a lot of followers. And the French city of Tours was searching for a new bishop. His followers knew the perfect one, of course, Martinus. According to a legend, Martinus didn't really want to become a bishop, but preferred to travel to convert people. I would prefer to travel too, without the converting people part. But his followers insisted. When they wanted to bring him to the church in Tour, Martinus fled. And he hid in a shed with geese. Which was pretty stupid if you ask me, because geese make an awful lot of noise when there's a stranger in their area. So his followers found Martinus and he then became the bishop of Tour. Martinus died on the 8th of November 397 and buried three days later in the Basilica of Tours. Soon after he was buried, people started to honor him. So St. Maat is celebrated on the day when Marinus of Tours was buried. The 11th of November, the day that he essentially entered heaven, which is seen as a pretty great day, and we're celebrating. But like I previously stated, it is expected that it is a combination of Germanic and Christian celebrations, but according to researchers, there's not a whole lot of proof for that. James Fraser, who is a Scottish anthropologist, thinks that the St. Martha festivity is of pagan origin. Carrying the fire is a pre-Christianity fertility ritual which was widespread in Western Europe. This pagan ritual was taken over by the church to win the trust of the people. But other researchers think that this is not the case and that the festivity was introduced by the church. St. Martha used to be a festival for the poor. They got some extra food and drinks from the rich and richer people, most of them things like sugar beets or bread. They would also burn big fires. And like I previously said, it is also coincided with the time of harvest, which was heavily celebrated by Germanic people. The produce was harvested before the cold arrived, and people ate and drank a lot. It was also the time when the lease was paid and the staff was hired again, and when the first wine also had matured, which is always worth celebrating if you ask me. Centuries ago, people in the Netherlands and other countries where they celebrated often used to eat St. Maarten's Schoense or St. Martin's geese. The reason for that is because the geese were the symbol of St. Martin. He hid in a pen with geese when people wanted him to become a bishop, 
but he was reluctant. But the sound of the geese betrayed him. In 1631, the city council of Groningen forbade people from eating a goose for St. Maarten. In the 19th century, most people didn't eat goose anymore. In the Groningen province, for instance, they only ate goose in the town of Westerwolde that day. Around the 11th of November, Gansemarkten, or geese markets, are still held nowadays, which is a remnant of old St. Maarten celebrations. St. Martinus Lopen, or St. Martin's Walking, slowly changed from a begging tour to a festivity and folk tradition over time. At the end of the 18th century, people started to walk with a self-made lampion, or lantern. These were first made from fodder beads or some sort of root, but later on more and more kids used to make paper lanterns. A lot of school children walked along the doors and got fruit or even money. But nowadays kids usually get candies after singing a song about St. Maarten and... There used to be processions, but those rarely take place anymore. Only in the beginning of the 1900s, the celebrations became more popular under other layers of the population. During the Second World War, the German occupiers forbade any street lights and cars and bikes could only have a little light. And houses had to have heavy curtains so the light would stay inside. They did this to prevent Allied airplanes from being able to navigate via lit up cities. So St. Martin was celebrated indoors, often inside classrooms. Nowadays, the idea around St. Martin is, of course, nothing like it used to be. People do not walk because they need to be able to get food and most people walk for St. Martin but do not really associate it with religion anymore. It has truly turned into a children's festivity for every kid, no matter their beliefs. But it has changed to only kids, unfortunately for me. So this is also why fruit, bread, drinks and money were changed to candies instead. On the evening of the 11th of November, as soon as it gets dark, children that are on primary school go door to door. The little ones go under parental supervision, but the older ones generally do not. And they go with earlier handcrafted lanterns made of hollow out beads or food beater, which were big beads used to feed cattle, which my dad used to do and use when he was a kid. And more recently, paper handcrafted lanterns with a little light in them. And only after singing songs, the kids get to receive candy in return. And sometimes also fruit, but we generally dislike the people who gave us fruits because we're there for the candies. It is not entirely sure why the lights in these lanterns are there, but there is a legend that the animals in Mata drove um, had run away in the evening and helpful villagers went searching for the animal with lights. And others say that the lights in the lanterns remind us of the St. Mata fires and the torches that the people used to bring to go from door to door. So in a lot of St. Martha songs you will hear kids sing about light and fire. So nowadays there are some parades all throughout the Netherlands for St. Martha, and there are a couple places that still have the St. Martha fires, but not many. In the city of Utrecht, celebrating St. Martha was forbidden after the Reformation in 1580. But after the Second World War, schools especially started to stimulate the celebration of St. Martha again and it worked. It's interesting to see how every region was in that matter, because while we don't know exactly how it was celebrated earlier, as it was a tradition for peasants and only the stories of the true elites were written down, of course, walking during St. Martha was never forbidden in the Groningen region. It seemed like people always thought it was an innocent children's celebration or poor celebration. And the Protestant leaders very much disapproved of the Catholic faith and especially celebrations, so but they didn't really do anything about it there. Another reason for the fact that walking during St. Martha after the Reformation was not strictly forbidden in most places despite its Catholic origin is probably because it was also used as a social function. Less fortunate people went to the richer neighbors and villagers. During the 17th and 18th century in Groningen there were no general regulations against the old Catholic traditions, including the celebration of St. Martha, but it was forbidden to serve the traditional St. Martin goose. So, in the Netherlands, St. Martin is generally celebrated in several different regions. It's generally celebrated all over the provinces of Limburg, Groningen, Friesland, Drenthe, North Brabant, and parts of North Holland, including the West Friesland, which is where I'm from, and Kennemerland regions. Reasons why we don't celebrate St. Martin everywhere in the country are said to be religion and history. St. Martin was a knight from Pannonia, a province in the Roman Empire, and is mainly connected to Catholicism. When one was Catholic, they wouldn't celebrate Protestant celebrations and the other way around. It is also celebrated in a few parts inside Holland, Zeeland, Gelderland, Flevoland and Overijssel, but nothing as major as in other regions. In recent years though, the lantern processions have become more widespread as a popular ritual, even in Protestant areas in the Netherlands, because the connection to the faith is small nowadays. 
But it's not always that easy because St. Martha hasn't been a religious holiday for quite a while now. So currently whether people celebrate it or not depends on, of course, their regional traditions. But also because some people take over old habits and holidays because they read about it. In the beginning of the 20th century, folk festivals like St. Martha were having a harder time as Christmas and St. Claus became more important and because of that quite some folk festivals in the Netherlands were slowly going extinct. But St. Martha has turned that around in some areas where it was celebrated less. In Amsterdam, for instance, St. Martha wasn't celebrated anymore, but in the 2000s it was started again and now it is very normal for kids in Amsterdam to walk around the city with their lanterns, with lights and sing for candies. So yeah, if you're living in the Netherlands, please make sure to have candies in your house this evening. Thank you so much for watching this week's video about the St. Martha tradition in the Netherlands. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. If you live in the Netherlands or, I don't know, you're renting a, a house on a regular pedestrian street, you know, and it's the 11th of November and you're living in one of the areas where it's celebrated, please have some candies in your house because it's very, very rude in my opinion uh, if you do not do it. There are also some people that sometimes hide for the kids and that's just weird. Just let the kids enjoy it, seriously. But the least you can do is just put, I don't know, a basket with candies outside and then they'll just grab one. That's all. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe with the little notification bell so you do not miss out on any of my other upcoming videos. Big thank you to my Patreons and I will see you next time.